This has been a directing duo on this film, and you've been long uh, time collaborators. And I believe it was a long time coming, this film, right? Is it right that you wrote it since was it 2009? Yeah? <laughs> yeah, we started working in 2009. Well, we had the idea in 2009, and then we started developing some ideas for the film. And um, we. We were at a film festival in Brazil in November 2009, we, I, and we, I had a, we had a short film, which I directed, and uh, Juliano co-produced, and Emily, who's Emily Lisclo, the producer of Bacurau, she's over there. <laughs> and, and we we showed this short film, which was incredibly successful at the festival. It was sci-fi-ish, it was a fake documentary. And, um, and then we saw films at the festival, which got us thinking about the way, um, and, and this is in the words of the, 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 the documentaries themselves, simple people were portrayed, mm. you know, people from small communities. Um, which, by the way, normally from the region where we come from in Brazil, in the Northeast. And of course, we disagreed with much of the, the style and the representation of, of simple people coming from the region where we came from. And we thought that we should do something and make a film about great people, you know, amazing people, but who come from small, a small, very small community. And then, of course, we also began to think about Asterix. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and how, how did it work sort of collaboratively? Did you, um, did you write together? Did you get together? Or how, how does that, your partnership work? I think there, there were many different moments in the development of the script. But uh, uh, we did everything together since the beginning. Uh, it was uh, always a very... Uh, how can I say, a delightful idea to make a film like that because it's the kind of film that we always wanted to, to do. And we had a lot of fun discussing those ideas and those possibilities. And at the same time, we, 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 we are in a very different uh, moment in Brazil. And we missed a lot that, that time. And now it's very different. It's, we are in deep shit, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we. Uh, but uh, yeah, we we observed uh, those changings uh, throughout the, the years, and and I think uh, the film uh, absorbed a lot of those uh, those energies, those bad vibes, and uh, at the same time, uh, that there there were this moment. Uh, when Donald Trump was uh, was about uh, to be elected president of the United States, and uh, it kind of gave us uh, another level of, uh, you know, we we just uh, found uh, our villains now, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, and and then uh, after all the traveling uh, of Kleber with Aquarius, his previous film uh, we just sat for I think eight months to to work on this final draft every and day from nine at nine to five yeah we worked hard but we had a lot of fun so yeah so we had plenty of time to to discuss things to, to think about the camera to think about uh, the approach with the cast and uh, all the developments of the characters and everything so I think uh, in the moment of the shooting, we we knew very well what we wanted to do. Uh, so yeah, it was uh, pretty easy actually to to direct together. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, uh, I think it, uh, there was three or four uh, moments in in the in the in the shooting that we need to split to. To shot some scenes simultaneously because because of the schedule, mm -hmm. but uh, always very uh, looking what the other was doing. Uh, very, yeah, that's it. Uh, it was it was a wonderful experience because we had a lot of help from people that we worked together for a long time. Also, the crew, 
it's fantastic people that we work for the same time that we work together. So yeah. Some of your same collaborators. Yeah, come, yeah. Come the, the, the the DOP and the production designer. The, it's like a, a big family of uh, uh, film freaks, maybe. Most importantly, <laughs> we we're still talking and we still love each other. <laughs> Helps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, if we could just talk on the on the sort of themes of the films. Um, so obviously it's quite universal. This sort of you know capitalist authority selling out their own people um, to the highest bidder. But it's obviously had a particular impact in in Brazil. Can you talk about that and what that's been like? The film was incredibly well received in Brazil. Um, it opened in um, 29th of August, and it's still in cinemas, and I think we have uh, about 800,000 tickets, which is quite unexpected for a film like this. Um, and it just became a, an interesting uh, cultural phenomenon, because I think it also came at a time when, when there was a lot of frustration uh, um, going around in Brazilian society and politics. Um, it's a very tough and cynical time in Brazil at the moment. So the film gives you this uh, cathartic um, uh, energy, which, I mean, uh, you really had to see some of the screenings. Uh, we got many videos of audience reactions in Brazil, just people exploding into applause and screaming and... Just like a football match. Like a... Like a <laughs> Demented football match and demented, uh, and, and, and it's a it's a time I'll never forget in my life because it's it, it's been a very tough, very intense and emotional uh, reaction to the film. But after all, uh, all in all, uh, it, it's a film. You know, it's fiction. Um, w there was a moment in Rio in one of the advanced screenings at the Odeon Cinema. Right after the, the screening, uh, the audience was so kind of um, excited and moved. And, and a very young guy, maybe 17 years old, a student, he said, I feel like killing someone. <laughs> and then Julian immediately diffused the situation and said, no, you got to pay attention. I mean, you, we kill people here. It's, it's extremely complicated for you to say something like this in the microphone in a public place. Yeah, if you want so to kill someone, you kill in, the, in a film. So. Yeah, <laughs> so it, it's kind of it works. delicate, <laughs> kind of works. difficult, you know, uh, things that we, you have to deal with, you know, between cinema, the language of cinema, the language of emotional cinema, and of course, reality, which they are connected, but at the same time, they should also be separated. Yeah. Because it's you strike, I I find quite a, an interesting balance with this film. Because obviously the, you know, the themes it's very very serious. But, um, you know, you've got lots of influences mixing in there. John Carpenter, Die Hard, and there's this. It's a fun ride. I feel weird saying that because it's so you know it is quite hyper violent, but it's really exhilarating and sort of thrilling to watch. Was that always a sort of balance you were kind of aware of when you were making it, or something that sort of came out in your edit process? There are many, I think there are many levels. Uh, we discussed uh, Die Hard, for example, in, in, the, in the time of the script, only because of the camera and uh, some moments in the beginning of the film, especially. And a vision lens. Uh, yeah, the, the aesthetics sometimes, maybe. Uh, but uh, there are other discoveries that we made f in the editing room, for example. We discovered some, some films that are in, in Bacurau, but we didn't discuss about it. And it's, uh, it's a beautiful thing, I think, because uh, it, it's, from, uh, it, it's, it's a film made uh, with love for films, <laughs> you know, and a specific kind of films that uh, 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 Brazil, uh, as, a, as a public uh, of, cine uh, of cinema, are not used to, to see uh, Brazilian films like that. So, yeah, I don't know if I'm answering your, your yeah, question, you but uh, yeah, wow. it's, uh, it's uh, for example, that, that, that moment uh, in the car uh, when Pacotti is driving uh, the two dead bodies, mm. we realized that it's very similar to Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia from Sampequimpa, uh, and we never talked about it. It's just 
It's just there. So but of course, yeah. you, you can see the, 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 the name of the school is João Carpinteiro. It's the literal <laughs> translation for, for John yeah. Carpenter. So, <laughs> so some things more obvious. There are many obvious. kinds of, uh, <laughs> yeah. Great. Say something. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, well, what I'd like to say is that I, I, I was probably the last uh, uh, generation of cinephiles who had access to the great movie palaces. So when I was a teenager in the 80s, I, I could still go and see on a Tuesday afternoon the new film by Brian De Palma or David Cronenberg or uh, John Carpenter and, um, and Paul Verhoeven, who's still making films, by the way a new film coming out soon, Benedetta. And, um, and that, of course, had a huge impact on myself as a person, as a cinephile. And, and basically what we wanted to do was to make a film which would, um, which would, if we could go back in time, play really well in one of those great movie houses which have since closed. And, With um, no, rush, no rush in the beginning of the film. Yeah, that this, was another thing that thing was very described, important. that was discussed by us in the script. It takes, you got to have a little patience with the film because you don't know where it's going, but we are giving you information and, and there's this person and there's that person, there's the community and the church. And, and then after maybe 40 minutes of investment, slowly things begin to happen. You can see uh, the first alien or the first UFO. That is a drone. <laughs> yes, and, and so yeah, we we kind of um, thought a lot about the older style of films, but I hope that doesn't sound pretentious in any way. I mean, films can be any way you want them to be. You know, you can make uh, films just any way you want them to be. The the, the film we wanted to, to make was this one, and and it, it's kind of like uh, in, at least in our in our minds a throwback to. Uh, the films that made us want to make films. Right. Um, before I throw it out to the audience, just because you mentioned Paul Verhoeven, I want to embarrass you here and ask you to share with the room what you told me earlier, which was one of the first films you saw in this NFT One screen was... Yes, I'm a very lucky guy because in G January 1996, I happened to be in London, and I came to this room to watch two films, Goldfinger, introduced by Mr. Sean Connery. He was right here. <laughs> and then three or four days later, Showgirls, introduced by Paul Verhoeven. Incredible. So for me, these are historic <laughs> moments. And now I find myself on the same stage. And it's <laughs> incredible. <laughs> I think we are all. I mean, I, I'm, me and Juliano, we are Latin Americans, we are Brazilians, and within Brazil we come from the Northeast, which historically and, and economically is the poor region. It's poor for a reason, not because um, the region itself decided to be poor. It was, it's poor because of history and because of how the country was wired and organized. So it's a man-made uh, kind of a uh, difficult situation imposed on a region. And um, so I have traveled to many places. I have looked and read about things, and, and, and so has Giuliano. And we came up with a story which, um, without, I hope, uh, being academic, but we dramatize situations where power uh, and money and uh, race and uh, uh, geography come into play and, and, and you have a film which is designed as a Western to propose these dramatic situations. Um, so the film has hit quite a nerve, uh, of course, back in Brazil, but we went to the New York Film Festival, which was an amazing um, experience. Um, and then at the, the big hall where we screened the film last October, uh, in a situation like this, a Q&A, a wonderful Q&A, by the way, there was a, a gentleman right on that side over there. Hmm. And then he said, uh, an American uh, gentleman, white, he said, uh, so let me see if I understand. The, the Americans are the heavies? 
<laughs> so, yeah, the Americans are the heaviest. And I said, why, why, why the Americans are the heaviest? And Kleber immediately said, why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we are dealing with 120 years of uh, cinema, and, and, and of course, the United States has been incredibly proficient in the way that it has made films and. And of course, we get the American point of view all the time. In this film, it changes things a little bit. It's like the, the, the Indians become the main characters, and then the Americans become the, the Indians, as in the old Westerns. And it's just the way we decided to play with. with um, but we never woke up one day and said, oh, we're going to make a political film. It doesn't work like that. But at the same time, uh... <laughs> <laughs> we know who invaded who, so yeah. <laughs> come on. Yeah, uh, I, I was born in the Northeast, but I have uh, my family from my mother's side is from the south, uh, from Rio Grande do Sul, the extreme south of Brazil, with a lot of German and Italian colonies. And I heard uh, this kind of uh, talking a lot since uh, I was a kid. and. It's, it's just, uh, it doesn't make any sense for, for us. Uh, uh, we, we, we have been dealing with this kind of uh, thinking uh, uh, since the beginning uh, in Brazil. And uh, I don't know what to say. It's, uh, it's, it's just uh, because the interesting thing for us is to, to, to put uh, uh, very clear in the film the m many different levels of, uh, of uh, I don't know, to, uh, contradictions uh, that we have in our history and, uh, and the mistakes that we made as a society. And I don't think th that is something exclusive in Brazil, of course not. Uh, every, everywhere everywhere we ca you can uh, find situations like that. It's, uh, yeah, I don't know what to say. I think it's, uh, it's that, it's that, uh, Mis mis historical mistakes that uh, we keep repeating, uh, and uh, and now uh, I think it was yesterday uh, in a school, a uh, uh, high-class uh, school in Recife, in the northeast. Uh, some students in the class uh, uh, made this gesture. Yeah, and they started to call themselves Aryans. Uh, I don't know the translation. Aryans. 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 So. It's, it's, uh, it's that ignorance that uh, we are talking about, you know? So it's becoming more and more extreme. I don't know what to do, and just make films. Yeah. I, I, I would just like to say that uh, we're here tonight at the BFI, the National Film Theater, and the BFI is one of the strongest uh, institutions which takes care of memory and preservation and, and the love for film. And just to raise awareness that the situation with the Brazilian Cinematheque is, is extremely serious right now. In fact, the Cinematheque hasn't seen uh, such a dire uh, situation um, like the one we're living now, where the whole idea of film preservation has become something that, that the people in government decided to mock. And uh, it, it's, there is an international document going around, and. Uh, it's just, uh, I feel so privileged uh, being here at the BFI tonight, and it's such an honor. And I felt that I should uh, just uh, say a few words about the situation at the Brazilian Cinematheque, which is extremely serious and truly sad. Yeah. It changes a lot for me. I love many scenes. I don't think I don't like any of, of those scenes. <laughs> uh, but I, uh, there's a scene that nobody talks a lot about, uh, strangely, with me, I don't know, maybe with Kleber it's different, but uh, the scene where the couple of uh, foreigners uh, shoot the car and then they go to the bushes to, you know, <laughs> to do that, uh, for me is very disturbing, a very disturbing moment in the film, and I would like to see more people uh, talking to me about it, because for me, it's, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with what we did in the film, and, and, and I'm, yeah, just happy with all the scenes, but I, I, the one scene that nobody really talks about <laughs> <laughs> 
is the the strange uh, delivery of books to the to the school oh, in, yeah. in the truck. Yeah, I, I like that scene, and it's it hasn't been really discussed the way I think it should. For me, it's one of the most violent scenes in the film. I think we've got to wrap up, I'm afraid. Um, can everyone please join me again in thanking uh, Clyburn and Juliana?